I am UFO Jane. For this video, we're going to be talking hieroglyphs, which, by the way, is really annoying to spell I before E except after C, for just a tip if you're searching. Come on over here, Barry. Come on. Here. Right. So we're going to be talking hieroglyphs, which is something maybe this guy remembers from ancient Egypt or at least symbols that kind of look like them, which of course there is writing that predates Egyptian hieroglyphs. So just ancient weird looking symbols that appear over the past century across the world during UFO encounters. You've probably heard of the Roswell UFO crash. On June 4th, 1947, a flying saucer piloted by ETs crash landed in the New Mexico desert right outside Roswell. Well, unofficially. Officially, it was just a weather balloon. Actually, in 2020, officially, it was just a United States Army Air Force balloon or something like that. Okay, so you've probably heard of some version of the Roswell UFO crash, but did you know that? Egyptian-like hieroglyphs appeared on some of the materials that were recovered from the Roswell crash. What? And how I know this is I attended AlienCon several years ago, and the grandchild of Major General Jesse Marcel, who is the man who oversaw the cleanup of the Roswell crash, he said that his grandfather spoke of seeing geometric symbols appearing on the debris, including a triangle with the sphere on top. Now, I actually shared this discovery online and this was picked up by the UK Express News. And actually, it turns out that many people have researched this and come across this as well. But for whatever reason, it's not one of those common Wikipedia facts that you can find about Roswell. Now, to make matters even more mysterious as you know I like to do here. The symbols seen at the Roswell crash site are very eerily reminiscent of symbols seen during another equally well documented but not quite as famous UFO case, the Rendlesham UFO case. And these geometric symbols and these that were seen during the Rendlesham UFO included a triangle with a sphere on the top. The Rendlesham UFO is considered to be Britain's Roswell. More than 30 years after the Roswell UFO crash in New Mexico, unexplained lights were observed by multiple United States Air Force personnel, including most notably Lieutenant Colonel Charles Holt, over the course of three nights in late December in 1980. The encounter occurred in the Rendlesham Forest, which is located in Suffolk, England. Little known fun fact that just a few days after the Rendlesham UFO incident, way across the pond in Texas was yeah. another extremely well-documented UFO sighting, the Cash Landrum incident. So I, I don't want to spend this video going into the detail of that, but I think that coincidence is intriguing considering all these other coincidences of hieroglyphic like symbols appearing. Now, Another little known fact, mm -hmm. but that's a bit more relevant to this video, is that Staff Sergeant Jim Penniston actually claimed to have seen the UFO or a UFO up close and touch it. And not only that, but he observed hieroglyphic like symbols on the craft. Another really strange twist in the story is it's rumored that Penniston actually went missing for a period of time and others were concerned that he could have been abducted by, well, you know who. Penniston also later claimed that upon touching the craft, he received a telepathic download and a binary code message. So that would be, you know, the ones and zeros. And he believed that UFOs were time travelers. Now, it may seem hard to top that case, but I think I can do it. 
if the Rendlesham UFO case is Britain's Roswell, then the Aurora, Texas UFO incident of 1897 is, well, Texas's Roswell. So is Roswell really New Mexico's Aurora, Texas incident? I don't know. It's so confusing. But for those of you who may not know about this one, on April 17th, 1897, it was reported by the locals that a massive cigar-shaped craft crashed into the yard of a local judge. A humanoid alien deceased body was discovered in the wreckage and promptly given a Christian funeral. Now, there's a lot more to the case than that. I've covered it already on YouTube and on my website, so I'll put the links below. For this video, though, I want to hone in on a very specific detail of this case. I want to show you this original newspaper article from the Dallas Morning News. The pilot of the ship is supposed to have been the only one on board, and while his remains are badly disfigured, enough of the original has been picked up to show that he was not an inhabitant of this world. Mr. T.J. Weems, Mr. T.J. Weems, Mr. T.J. Mr. T.J. Weems, Mr. T.J. T.J. Weems name, the United States Signal Service officer at the place and an authority on astronomy gives it as his opinion that he was a native of the planet Mars. Papers found on his person, evidently the record of his travels, are written in some unknown hieroglyphics and cannot be deciphered. So there you have it. That's not one, Roswell, not two, Rendlesham, but now three, Aurora, Texas. Three extremely well documented and, and relatively famous cases detail witnesses of UFO craft seeing hieroglyphic like symbols. What's going on here? But guess what? That's not it. Let's talk about another famous UFO, the Kecksburg UFO. In 1965, December again, and guess what? According to a 1990 episode of Unsolved Mysteries, Witnesses saw a UFO up close in the woods. Sound familiar? Kind of like Rendlesham. And they witnessed Egyptian-like hieroglyphs on it. Hmm. There's also the case of a flying saucer recovered in 1957 in Silfo. That's in the United Kingdom. And according to the source, the copper base of the object was inscribed with hieroglyphs. Now, these are the more high-profile UFO sightings out there that I could find, but I found dozens upon dozens more reports submitted to MUFON. I couldn't really move, and there were four to six small gray ETs at the foot of the bed. I was extremely scared. I was all of a sudden outside. I don't know how I got there. I was standing next to a triangular craft. It looked like it had markings on the craft, nothing like I'd seen, kind of like drawings or hieroglyphs. After I saw this, I touched it and woke up in my bed like normal. I laid down and had a strange feeling something was over my house. As quick as I thought it, the bedroom filled with the strange orange light. I closed my eyes, absolutely scared to death to open them, afraid of what I might see. Then, symbols went across my eyelids, like hieroglyphics. I just prayed that it would stop and go away. I know what happened, and my daughter still remembers seeing it. Suddenly, everything just seemed to stop, like when you pause the television. Everyone, including myself, was paralyzed. Out of nowhere, I saw what looked like Egyptian hieroglyphics pan across my field of vision. It seemed very dreamlike and happened quickly. Then involuntarily my head turned towards the sky and I heard a very strange voice. It was clearly someone speaking, but I've never heard anything like it before. At the time I could only describe it as an alien's voice. Two weeks ago my husband was awakened out of his sleep. This morning he called me into his bedroom and told me that he had seen a being in his bedroom around 6 a.m. He said that it appeared to be self-illuminating very bright. He said it was about my height, which is approximately five foot and five inches, and that it glowed and had no face. He said its head was a little larger than a human. He'd also seen a three foot by three foot square shaped object on the mirror of his closet doors. 
he said it looked like a large picture frame and that there was a very bright light illuminating illuminating from within it with strange black symbols that resembled hieroglyphics inside of what he described as small boxes that, that were also illuminated. At about 6.15 to 6.20 on February 10th, 2009, I saw a large circular object floating above Highway 16 on the west side of Charlotte, North Carolina. It was kind of shaped like a flat disc or acorn and was floating above the trees on the right of the highway. When I approached the object, I realized that it was hovering without suspension. Across the bottom of the object, there seemed to be markings that looked almost hieroglyphic in nature. When I passed under the object, I remembered nothing but fear and curiosity. I must have been going close to 100 miles per hour when I was passing under it to get out of its way, and the only thought of stopping, stopping for a picture was thwarted with my fears of abduction. I still to this day pass by the curve on Highway 16 and remember the sighting every time I drive that route. Wow, guys, so what's going on here? Have you ever seen a UFO or an alien and then also strange, weird writings that you couldn't decipher that maybe looked like hieroglyphs? Have you heard of any cases that I may have missed? What are your theories? All right, guys, that's a wrap of episode one. I will see you next week with episode two. And please, guys, if you enjoy this video and you want more, please like, subscribe, and comment, hit the notification bell. Keep it weird. Okay. That's what it's